Hi everyone, welcome to the So Essential vlog. I'm Lucy and I'm here today to talk you through how to fix stitch quality problems with your sewing machine. So it's a bit of a troubleshooting guide, a bit of a checklist for you to run through because in our vast experience here at So Essential of dealing in sewing machines and supporting customers with their sewing machines, what we've found is that the vast majority of the time running through this checklist that it will be one of these issues that's causing the problem and that is very very easy to fix so you could be sitting there tearing your hair out thinking why won't this just work why am i getting skipped stitches why is the thread breaking why is the machine jamming why is the bobbin thread pulling through to the top side and vice versa you know any of those sorts of problems the thread bunching up you can be tearing your hair out thinking i've done everything right why isn't this working what we've found is the vast majority of the time there's just a little nuance, just one little thing that hasn't been done quite correctly that's an easy fix that will just remove all of those problems for you and let you get on with what we all want to be doing which is having a nice time sewing. So I'll run through that with you today. We, the reason we're able to give this advice is we are a specialist dealer of sewing machines and we stock all the big brands, Janome, Husqvarna, Faf, brother and Elna machines and you can find the link to our website where you'll find all of those and all of the parts and accessories that go with them as well and we are available for support if you need any advice or guidance around any of those things but without further ado let's crack on so the first thing that you need to check if you're having problems and it might be sound that like I'm teaching my granny to suck eggs here but just check that you've threaded the machine correctly. Now we often get beginners who've never sewn before ring us up and say I think there's something wrong with the machine it just doesn't it's just not working properly and actually it transpires that they just haven't quite threaded it correctly but equally we've often had very very experienced sewists as well people who've been sewing for for decades who've perhaps upgraded or changed their machine and ring us up concerned that there's a problem again and actually um, once again it's just a slight nuance the machine this thread needs to be threaded slightly differently to their old one um, and that's what's causing the problem so always go back to your manual follow it step by step always make sure the presser foot is raised because that releases the tension discs and ensures that the thread it goes through the tension discs and then the, therefore the tension is applied correctly when sewing. That's one of the most common mistakes. Um, and just always check the manual, make sure you follow the thread path exactly, you go through all the different thread guides. There's often one on the needle bar that can easily be missed or forgotten about. So just fastidiously go through those instructions again, make sure the bobbin's threaded correctly as well, make sure the thread from the bobbin goes through any thread guides that are relevant in the bobbin case and the surrounding area. And that is your first step, just to make sure that all of those things have been done correctly correctly. If you're still having problems, very often there'll be great YouTube videos for your specific make and model of machine that show you exactly how to thread it. We've actually done one for a Janome 725 which you can see, so it's worth having a look on here as well. Tip number two, make sure you change your sewing machine needle regularly. This is one of the biggest culprits of stitch quality problems. It can cause uneven stitches, skip stitches, thread breakages, and it's one of the most easy things to get right. So we recommend changing it. You know, I change mine actually after every project. Um, some people use them for a bit longer than that. Um, but just remember that by looking at a needle, you can't tell whether it's sharp you could look at it and think that it looks sharp but actually it could be slightly dented or blunted and if it's making a thumping sound as it hits the fabric that's a good indicator that it needs to be changed um, so just bear that in mind it's always worth if you're having problems just trying a new needle out because that may resolve the issue for you straight away a couple of other tips to do with changing the needle Make sure that when you insert it, you push it all the way up as far as it will go. People often tighten them too much as well and that can cause breakages and problems with the needle shank and the needle bar. So you don't need to go too over the top with how tight you screw it, you know. Just make sure it's nice and firm and secure, um, but you don't really need to go to town on that. Um, 
make sure that it's the, the right orientation so your needles will always have a flat side of the shank and then a curved side of the shank usually the flat side of the shank goes towards um, the needle bar and the more curved side would be towards you um, and then another little tip as well is that you don't want to drop the needle into the machine and it is positioned perfectly for that to happen if you happen to let go of it it could easily drop into the machine you don't want that to happen because that can cause problems so a handy little tip when you're changing a needle if you're worried about that happening is just to slip a bit of paper or a bit of card over the needle plate while you change the needle tip three is to always use the correct type of needle for the fabric that you're working with so a common misconception is that a universal needle will work with every type of fabric and and that's not always right sometimes you won't get very good results with a universal needle with certain types of specialist fabric and actually there have even been cases where somebody has never changed the needle on their sewing machine I've heard of that before um, you know and that will cause you problems so I've got a little selection here to show you of different needle types we've got uh, leather if you're working with leather fabrics there's stretch and ballpoint needles which are for knit and jersey fabrics there's um, universal which works with a wide range of fabrics and then the jeans needles as well and there's a few other types of needles as well they're all available on our website and the link to our website's below um, and there's actually an extensive blog article on our blog as well that I'll pop a link to below with the different types of needles and which fabrics you should use them for but I always think it's good to have a good selection and then test on scraps of your fabric to see what results you get and see if you're happy with them and if you are working with more specialist types of fabric you might need some further tips as well um, on working with that particular type of fabric so we've written quite a few articles again on our blog about working with slippery fabrics or working with jersey and knit fabrics on a sewing machine and there's a whole wealth of articles out there on the internet as well that you can refer to but if you're using the right needle and you're still not quite getting the results you want have a little read up on those because sometimes you might need to lengthen the stitch length for example or you might need to use a bit of a stabilizer to um, just give the fabric a bit more stability when you're sewing with it you know there's certain fabrics that can be quite tricky and it's not always your machine that's the problem sometimes it is the fabric but definitely check that you're using the right type of needle for that fabric as your first port of call Tip four is to use the right type of bobbin for your machine. So it might be tempting to spot a bobbin in your sewing bag or your sewing box and think, oh, I'll put that in, it'll work, I'm sure it'll be fine. But actually there are lots of different, there are very subtle differences and nuances between the bobbins designed for different machines. They're very carefully and specifically engineered for different machines so that that goes across the brands but also even within brands there's a certain designs that work with certain model of machines so it's really important to check and make sure that you get that right and at best you know if you put the wrong type of bobbin in your machine you might end up with nesting where the thread gathers in the bobbin case um, or you might end up with the bobbin thread not pulling through properly but at worst it can actually damage your machine using the wrong type of bobbin and this is particularly true if you use say a metal bobbin when it's supposed to be a plastic bobbin it can actually damage your machine and cause those problems so always make sure you're using the right bobbins as recommended by the manufacturers and again on our website we do sell the bobbins and the accessories for the machines and there's always a compatibility chart where you can check that you're buying the right type of bobbin for your machine tip five use a good quality thread and again you wouldn't believe how often we find that this is the culprit of stitch quality problems and problems that people think they're having with the sewing machine but actually it's the thread they're using so as tempting as it might be to crack open that box of thread that grandma had stashed away for years and years you know threads can dry out they can fade they become, can become brittle over time and also cheap threads um, and poorer quality quality threads can have a lot more lint in them a lot more lint content which causes a lot more fluff and causes your machine to get much more 
gunked up I suppose for want of a better word and again that can cause problems so we always recommend high quality threads we're stockists of Gutterman threads you really can't go wrong with Gutterman they're fantastic I use them all the time we stock a huge range of colours and a huge range of uh, meterage as well so you can buy much bigger reels if it's a colour you're going to use all the time the same goes for Metla threads we also stock these as well um, and I also like to use these Saba threads as well they're polyester 120s on our website and um, they've got a really good meterage on them and they're very reasonably priced and come in a huge range of colours as well um, so all the threads we stock on our site we've tested I use all the time every week and I've never had any problems you know we only stock good quality threads and as tempting as it might be to reach for some of those cheaper ones or some very old ones perhaps that you've been handed down it can cause problems with your machine and you're much better off buying a good quality thread. Tip six is to make sure you've set the needle tension right for the type of fabric that you're working with. So lots of fabrics, you won't need to adjust the needle tension, but if you are experiencing problems, you've ruled out all the other issues that we've talked through already, it may be worth having a play around on some scraps of fabric and just adjusting the needle tension. So for example, if you're working with a thicker fabric, you may need to loosen the tension and you may need to lengthen your stitch as well. So just re Create exactly the situation on the garment or the project that you're going to be sewing on some scraps of fabric if it's going to be a double layer try it on a double layer if it's going to be a triple layer try it on there and just test until you're happy with the results and if necessary make a little note of the tensions and what you've tried also if you find that the fabric is pulling tight on the underside, uh, sorry, the stitch is pulling tight on the underside, counterintuitively, that can actually mean that your needle tension is too tight and needs adjusting. So bear that in mind as well. And like I say, if you've run through all of the other tips that we've given you, you're still having issues, just have a play around on some scraps of fabric with the needle tension. The other tip I'd throw in here as well is just to remember when you're sewing, your hands are just there as a guide. Don't be tempted to push the fabric through or pull it out the other side because again, that can cause lots of problems with uneven stitches and even possibly skip stitches as well. Finally, the most important tip is to maintain your machine, look after it, treat it well, and it will serve you for years and years to come. Now by this, we don't mean you've got to get some big complicated toolkit out and strip your machine down, but just simply by staying on top of the cleaning of your machine, that will make a huge amount of difference. Um, you'd be very surprised how often we've had a machine in where somebody's reported it's noisy or the stitch quality is poor, and when we take the needle plate off, and get the bobbin case out there's a sea of lint and fluff that's built up in there and is causing the machine to not perform at its best so it's very simple always make sure you switch the power supply off obviously before you start tinkering but just take the needle place off from time to time give the feet round the feed dogs a good clean clean where in your bobbin case and underneath your bobbin case and to do this don't be tempted to try and blow the fluff away because all you will do is blow it further into the machine. Usually your machine will come with a little cleaning brush and you can just gently lift the fluff and the lint out with that. And it's actually quite strangely satisfying. I'm not a very big fan at all of cleaning. In fact, I hate cleaning. But cleaning the fluff and the lint out of your sewing machine can be quite a satisfying task, or that might just be my sad opinion. But anyway, the other thing we would say as well is foreign objects can fall into the machine sometimes. And if that ever does happen, make sure you try and remove them immediately. You might need a nice long pair of tweezers to do that. Um, but we actually had a machine in for repair once where we found no less than 20 pins inside the machine. And you you can imagine that that actually caused some quite serious damage to the machine and quite a hefty repair bill so if you do notice that a pin drops in or a needle drops in stop sewing try and get it out if you can't get it out take it to um, your local dealer or whoever you bought the machine from and, and just make sure that you get that repaired because it can cause a lot of damage in terms of lubrication and oiling machines 
most modern machines now aren't supposed to be oiled so really it's best to leave that to the professionals when you have an annual service um, get your machine serviced they will know whether to oil the machine or not they'll know how and when to do it whereas if you start putting oil into your machine and it's not supposed to be oiled that could cause problems or even if it is supposed to be oiled but you put too much in um, that can kind of attract lint and fluff and that sort of thing as well and cause problems so we would always recommend it's better to leave that to the professionals so I hope you've enjoyed those top tips today I know sometimes it might seem like we're teaching granny to suck eggs but honestly I've spoken to people who've been sewing for decades and sometimes some of these things have been overlooked or forgotten about and I always go back to this checklist myself as well I wouldn't dare go to my husband who's very experienced at dealing with sewing machines and ask him um, that, or tell him I'm having a problem until I've been through this troubleshooting guide because I know he will always tell me have you checked that have you checked that you know so it's always worth running through as I said at the start of the video, all of our sewing machines and accessories are available on our site and the link to our site's below. I'll also pop the article about choosing the right sewing machine needle below as well. I hope you've liked what you've seen today and if you do like what you see, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. <laughs>